Okay. Oh, Evertel, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Do you know we had to cancel last week's episode? Ugh, what have you done to the game? It looks horrible. Sorry, Tally. I've been really distracted playing so much classic. Oh, wait, this is classic? Good. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow, it looks amazing. I love classic. Wait a minute, this isn't classic. Uh, what do you mean? Of course it is. It Just a minute, some stupid rogue is trying to kill me. Oh, there's three rogues. Wait, is there three rogues? Okay, I, I, I guess there's, there's three rogues. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, everybody just head over here whenever you get a chance, guys. Sorry, I, I was trying to uh, I was trying to kill them, but I don't think it'd really be possible. Uh, I could maybe use retail and oh wait no, I'm I'm fucking prot, so it wouldn't even work. Okay, just a second. Um, let's go. All right, we'll just keep. Just took me 25 minutes to kill an elite, and the sense of accomplishment I feel is yep. incredible. Now there's something that just doesn't feel right about it. <laughs> Lol, you noob. You probably think it's wrong just because there are no quest markers on the mini-map or no LFR or whatever. No, That's it's not right. that. It's Very the true. UI. The UI isn't right. Of course it is. No, no, hang on. What we should really do is make the mini-map bigger and put it in the middle here so we can see all of our teammates in raid properly. That's a good, uh, okay. that's a good idea. Have you got a threat meter up? No. Okay, you're going to need a threat meter that's and a, a list idea. of like raid buffs and stuff Holy so you can keep on top of them. Actually, make that nice and big just to be safe. You're going to want a more obvious and cool looking health and resource display. And look, you haven't even got any raid frames up. There. Well, yeah, need, we do. Uh, a debuff tracker. Make your chat bigger just so you can see what's going on. Yep. Your DPS meters, obviously. Yep. And you should probably just leave your bags open as well, to be honest, just in case you need something. Yeah, you really need to use quick. a potion. Oh, That's a good shit. idea. I almost forgot. Is that Chuck Norris? Yeah. Chuck Norris is cool. This is an actual right, vanilla yeah. screenshot now. That's I classic. Like it. I think you are just about ready to raid. Cool. Did you get all your attunements? Okay. What's an attunement? Knowledge is power. Ooh, Hello, Internet. Man. Taliesin here, Ooh, and welcome man. to okay. another episode of the Weekly Reset. Taliesin and Nevertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show, where we're going to talk all things World of Warcraft. Okay. That means classic. That means 8.2, the rise of Ashara. That means everything else in between. And this week, Internet, I also have some important philosophical questions to ask as we look at the impact classic is having on players' perceptions and enthusiasm of future live content in BFA. That's and a big beyond, question, isn't you know, it? Plenty to look forward to there. But one thing we're not going to talk about today is that Kotaku article that surfaced this week claiming that a major StarCraft theme... Blizzard cancels StarCraft first-person shooter to focus on Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. Good, nobody gave a fuck about that to begin with. People care about much more about the other two, uh, other two franchises. It was a good decision for Blizzard to shit-can that. ...first-person oh, shooter it, game that had been in development for two years has been cancelled by mistake. Blizzard, and the developers moved to bolster the teams on Diablo 4, which everyone has known about for ages, right. and Overwatch 2, which made people go... Huh. But whatever, man, that's three franchises that we don't tend to cover on this decidedly okay. Warcraft-centric channel. And let's be honest, a StarCraft shooting game getting cancelled is about as surprising as a Blizzard merchandising video getting downvoted. Cancelling StarCraft right. games is basically yeah. what Blizzard employees tend to do to let off a bit of steam. An average day in the life of Blizzard... Well, yeah, so did the fans. It is like, arrive in the morning, tell her he's Starcraft looking swole, anymore. get a coffee, cancel a StarCraft game, get on with your day's work, you know? But I find that we do have to at least mention it, because otherwise people go, oh, you didn't mention it, so now we've mentioned it. Good, and allow us to start properly now with Tentacle Watch. Yes, you'll remember that last episode we were all getting especially excited about the gift of Nazoth, the beautiful, big, disgusting hat eye that all the cool kids decided to keep wearing as a proper welcome to our tentacle overlords in 8.2, and which 99% of the player base didn't keep because apparently a decent transmog is more important than receiving soul bending old god whispers directly into your brain, which is a decision okay. I will never understand, but it's a decision a lot of people made. Fine, whatever. But it looked like us loyal servants of unattractive flesh helms had fine finally gotten our reward when we logged in to find incessant intrusive mutterings that were literally non-stop. We thought there was also an increase in NPCs cropping up who were also sporting the gift and speculation was rife what that the this fuck is could this? be the start of something that would build and become more outrageous and less tolerable leading into the new patch which must totally be pretty close at hand now because seriously though the whispers though that 
was two weeks ago, and since okay. then we haven't noticed any new NPC converts to the Tentacly cause. Where's and the far part from about building where's, into where's a classic? maddening crescendo of Lovecraftian madness and where's horror, classic? the whispers have actually died down, only making themselves known at all when you log in or port somewhere, or when you enter numerous specific parts of the map. These trigger points quite often coinciding with views of water or Naga encampments. Oh, looks like he's getting banned. That's too bad. Okay. Disappointing. Much more disappointing, though, is the fact that at the time of recording, we have heard absolutely nothing about the release of 8.2. Sure, more and more detailed info hits the PTR every build, and we'll be okay. looking at all of that this episode. Yes, and right. yes, the PTR has at least started to look a lot more ready we than a couple of weeks King ago. Too, We've by even the way. got in-game cutscenes added for the Mosh. opening Najatar scenario now. And there are those cool ones where you see your own character in as well. I like those ones. I like my character. Blizzard have already talked about Season 3 starting two weeks after the new patch goes live, which is good news because A, they're even thinking about when the patch goes live, but also because it means that Ian probably wasn't lying to my face when he told me that the Eternal Palace raid will be launching a couple of weeks after the patch. It also means, incidentally, okay. that Crucible of Storms is probably going to end up as one of the rarest cutting edge achievements in the game. Right now- Well, yeah, I mean, like, uh, it probably will remain as one of the rarest cutting edge achievements in the game. You're right. There's a lot of things that are really rare, but they're not valuable. You know, like, here's an example. A Cheeto that's shaped like a dick. You hardly ever see those. They're very rare. You know, like a, like a dick and balls. You know, like you've got the, the two balls and the dick that comes out of it, right? Like, maybe out of one bag, you might get one dick and balls Cheeto, but probably not. You can go through a whole year of eating Cheetos regularly, and you're not ever going to get a single dick and balls Cheeto. But whenever you finally get it, it's not, you realize it's not, it's not really a big deal, right? You're just like, okay, cool. And you just move on because you don't give a fuck. That's the same thing about Crucible of Storms. Nobody gives a fuck about the raid. That's why, that's why it's the rarest thing. Like, not all things that are rare are valuable. You know, like, I mean, there's plenty of things that are really rare and nobody gives a fuck about them. Oh, an absolutely minuscule amount of guilds have completed this two-boss raid on Mythic, including yep. just 11 alliance guilds. No wow, that's the entire- that, that's all of them. That's I had no idea, dude. Every single alliance guild has been able to clear, uh, Mythic- what's it called again? Crucible of Storms. Yeah, that, that's the entire thing. Let's see, is it- has my guild killed it? No, they haven't. Fuck, I need to get carried to do that. Shit. Club, uh, imagine that, 11 guilds. Not even our guild has done it, and we, don't forget, are officially the best guild in the world, with a name a bit like Immortalis. So yeah, all of this is promising, I bet, but it doesn't I bet detract not. from the fact that we still don't have a release date. And this is a problem, because yeah. 8.15 gaily sailed past the 77 day mark two weeks ago now. That magical yeah. number that Legion stuck to religiously oh, for nearly all of its patches. Oh, and yeah, it turns out there was a good reason for that, because it really is the upper limit for how long players seem willing to wait for new content. Especially if it's new content that they hope is going to fundamentally improve parts of the core game. And the lower limit is never. Like, they don't even even care they don't even come back they're like wow what are they gonna do again oh wow they're gonna increase the numbers again <laughs> they've never done that before so we're gonna have to do waycrest manor again huh for the trinket okay all right that they are unsatisfied with, which, like it or not, is the gargantuan cross that 8.2 has to bear. I am now at the stage where I'm willing to say that yes, Rise of Ashara has taken too long to arrive. I'm at the stage where I'm willing to say that yes, we are in a content drought right now, people. Battle for Dazara Law is uh... one of the all-time great raids, in my opinion, but it's become very clear, this expansion, how the lack of tier sets has really affected the replayability of these instances, no matter how entertaining they are. We just don't go back and farm this. I enjoy getting my plus 10 every week, but honestly, uh, I don't really have any goals in the game right now. And that's not truly terrible in itself. A patch no, being a couple of weeks to a month later than most of us would like usually wouldn't be a disaster. It's kind of par for the course, but this isn't a normal time. 
the world of Warcraft, in part because of the near unprecedented criticism and vitriol that BFA has received, but more importantly, True. because for the first time ever, BFA isn't the only WoW People game People have in a plan right B, now. and they wish they had used that plan B on fucking BFA. Like, that's classic is the plan B. That's what it is. Everybody's been waiting for this forever. Now, there's also classic to think about. And the WoW community really are thinking about it. Almost yeah, an exclusion you're goddamn of right. anything else. The near rabid hype and Twitch numbers that accompanied the launch That's of the right, classic dude. beta a couple of weeks ago has died down a bit, but it still yeah. dominates WoW content on all platforms, being given another bump this week with the level cap raising to 40. So, you know, we're talking actual real-life proper mounts and stuff now, boys. Classic is clearly going to be huge. It's yeah. my game of choice when we stream at the moment, and obviously this is excellent news for Blizzard. It's quite likely that because of all these Blizzard shit, Wow, sub numbers will be at their highest single number ever in that. Well, I'm not in a screenshot. They didn't put me in a screenshot. I'm online like eight hours a day. One fucking, there's not even a single fucking screenshot. They didn't put me in there, dude that first month Ridiculous. and they will make all of the money in the world and shit man if there's one thing that blizzard love it's making money so look That's everyone right. wins and you all know my opinion on it i think classic is great for world of Need more for King it's Mosh. consumer friendly because you're now getting over. two games for your sub money instead of one it's a great game in its own right beyond yeah, the initial nostalgia and That's i true. thoroughly enjoy my incredibly privileged position of being able to swap between these two versions of my favorite ever video game whenever i feel like it Good. but at the same time time there's a worry that i have well actually there's a couple and the main one concerns this content drought that i'm saying we're now in officially in the midst of bfa it, it's not a massive deal these things happen i mean they didn't really happen in legion but yeah okay and yeah it did it happened in legion what do you mean like it happens every single patch because people don't care about the content like, it happened, it happened at the end of fucking Tumas Argaris, people stopped caring. It happened, it happened at the end of Argus, people stopped caring. It happens every fucking patch. Like, not to this extent, Legion was better. Wow, that's great. Legion was better than BFA. Like, that, I mean... That's like making a video game and saying at least it's not as bad as, Atari, as, as fucking E.T. on Atari. Good job. Good job. It's not worse than the worst iteration of the game probably to date besides WAD. Oh my god. How amazing. Just a second. Let me read these. Uh, where's the Asmongold song players to find? Um, Stake Shield, thank you very much. The, oh, 5,000 bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. Um, let's see. Where's your uh, song playlist? Uh, it is on Spotify, and you can search streaming motherfuckers on Google, and uh, that's basically how you can find it. Thank you very much, man. He's talking about content drought and how good the expansion is. Yeah, I mean. It's even fairly likely that we will have heard some official word on the date of 8.2, by the time you even watch this video. I've learned that's okay. how it often goes. But something yeah. we've never had before is another wow to steal that hype, to undermine that excitement, to draw that attention. Wow is killing I'm wow. not a dev, so I don't know, but I guess it must be slightly disheartening to see a patch that you've poured your heart and soul into, a patch which is supposed to fix so many of the problems that people have with BFA, and which I think will go a long way to fix it. doesn't fix any of the fucking problems that people have with BFA. Like, what? what the fuck are you talking about that fix the problems you have at bfa titan forging still in the game yeah is the necklace that has an arbitrary farming requirement still in the game yeah it is is titan forging still in the game yep sure fucking is as right gear 100 fucking percent random gearing for gears for uh for your fucking armor yep that's in the game too uh a weapon's still gonna war forge and be 10 percent more powerful randomly and then that way you lose your raid spot to somebody else that just got lucky yep sure is can you master with gear based on people that have put in more work into the guild no you fucking can't no blizzard can't just fix all of these little baby problems and then expect people to act like the big problems aren't there anymore nobody gives a fuck about any of these little garbage fixes that they have for their own self-imposed problems people want fixes for the greater game that's why they keep coming back every expansion but they don't come back each patch is because they come back to the expansion and they're like is it good again nope all right next time hopefully we'll see what's going to happen and this is the issue 
right? They're not fixing anything in 8.2. Like nothing's getting fixed. Like, okay, maybe one thing is not going to be as bad as it was in 8.1. Who gives a fuck? At least some of them be overshadowed by a game that most people can't even actually play yet. It's a favourite like joke to say from a particular secular part of the classic community that classic will kill the live current WoW game when it launches, but honestly, has it killed it already? What impact is Classic and the Classic Beta having on the live game right now? Well, for one, there's scheduling. I know they said this wouldn't be the case, but I can't help my Activision sense tingling a little when I think about why we haven't got 8.2 yet. I know they said this wouldn't be the case, but I can't help suspecting in my tiny little brain that maybe they're being this chill about the Try release of a major new patch in the live game because they know that we, the players, are kind of sated with WoW Classic at the moment. Or maybe it's the other way around. My tiny little brain says maybe they've held off 8.2 on purpose because they are waiting for that initial classic cacophony to subside so people don't completely ignore Rise of a Either way, it's not going to. Uh, it might in like four, like three months or something like that, but it won't by the time the game comes out. I mean, the game's coming out in like what two months or something like that. People are gonna have like a million different types of content to do within the next two months. Nobody's gonna have anything to do in Rise of Ashara because nobody cares. I will, I will probably stream Rise of Ashara on the first day. We'll go through the new raid in the same way that we do every single time. I have not missed a raid release since Emerald Nightmare since I began streaming, and I don't want to change that, okay? I care. No, I know there's a lot of people, right, that, that do care. But uh, overall, I think that the majority of the player base is not real. And also, it's like, I, I think that Blizzard, I, I'm going to be honest here. Some people might not like me saying this, but I'm going to say it. I think Blizzard should shut down the classic beta, at least temporarily, whenever 8.2 comes out. Because what's going to happen is that you're just going to have a bunch of negativity about the new patch. Nobody's going to care about it. And it's going to end up being, like, why even release it if you're going to have the classic beta out? Like, I, I genuinely don't even know why you would want to release it. And it's no, I mean, it, it would just be it would be stupid for them to do. They won't care anyways. Well, the thing is, like, there's a, like uh, people don't realize this, but like the amount of like things that people say on streams and everything like that, it matters. Right. It, it does have an impact. And whenever you do shit like, you know, introduce something like this into the game. Wait, what is this helmet here? Oh, that's a really good helmet. What the fuck? I should get that uh, anyway. So I, I don't really think that's going to happen. I mean. But people aren't just going to go back to 8.2 and say it's great if Classic Beta is out. You're going to have everybody sitting there watching the streams of Classic WoW talking about how much 8.2 sucks. And overall, the reception is going to be terrible. People are going to complain about it. And nobody's going to care. It would be a waste of Blizzard's resources to introduce 8.2 whenever the Classic Beta is out and people are hyped up about another game. That's just the truth. And yeah, you can get mad all you want and say this is a bad decision. It's a bad decision for me, right? I mean, like, I've obviously, like, probably, you know, people, like, more people watching my stream now that I'm playing Classic than BFA, yeah. So it would be harmful for me, but it would still be a good decision for Blizzard. Why are you always shitting so hard on Wrath? Because it sucked. It, cr it ruined the game. Wrath ruined the game. That's why. Wrath itself was not necessarily terrible but it laid out the groundwork for the rest of the game being terrible. Hey, it's bad because either way, I don't have 8.2 to play right now. And I know that they said they wouldn't plan classic and live releases around each other, but you know what? My tiny little brain can't help but suspect that classic's release date in August is definitely to fix it into a pre-existing schedule. Because this beta is pretty much done as far as testing is concerned. It feels like it's only stress testing the shit out of the layering systems, which clearly are occasionally not working as described, that yeah. need to be really pushed. And if that is the plan, that live and classic releases releases work around each other, then there's always going to be that suspicion in my tiny little brain that classic and live releases, if not replacing each other, 
filling in for each other. Like, we might get a major new BFA patch later than we would have done because Naxxramas is hitting classic this that's, month. That's, that's totally true. That's 100% that fucking suck. true. That's totally 100%, 100% proof. That's a lot true. Really, really true. And that's fucking great. You're going to have a patch come out in, in, in BFA. People are going to be like, oh, wow, this is really cool. We're going to go play this. They're like, ah, oh, fuck, this sucks. Right? Then you're going to have a patch come out in classic. They're like, oh, wow, now I can get new gear for my character in classic. They play that. And then after they reach an apex in that, they go back to BFA. They're like, I'm fucking bored again. Then a patch comes out in BFA. It's better for the game as a whole. And this is what you guys need to fucking understand is that when WoW wins, everybody wins. Like classic wins, BFA people win, everybody fucking wins. So it's better for WoW as a whole for them to do this, to stagger out the patches. It, it, it's a great idea. I really, I'm, I hope that Blizzard does this everyone, no matter which of the two games they prefer. But that's an impact that I wouldn't like to see. And then there's the pretty stark contrast at times between the gameplay of the two titles, which at the moment is kind of having a negative impact on BFA2. Because what's startling about Classic, in my opinion, is how everyone playing it right now agrees precisely on what is good about it. The fact that it's a game based much more heavily on the journey compared to BFA's end game focus. The fact that the it's enemies you face in old Azeroth bring with them a sense of danger, which is kind of lacking in the current game. And that sense of danger provides a compelling gameplay loop that transcends the one note, often literally hands off play style of the classes. So excited though I am about 8.2, especially the essence system, which I love just because of how you get them more than the essences themselves, as excited Excited as I am about having two new zones to explore, there's now a part of me, having spent so much time with Classic recently, that can't help but think, huh, wouldn't it be cool if there was that sense of journey and danger in Najatar when we got there? Because there won't be, will there? As dangerous as Najatar is supposed to be, as much as the story literally revolves around our characters establishing a foothold and just plain surviving, the fact is, I already know that I'll never really feel the same kind of danger pulling a couple of mobs in this hostile new world as I do when I accidentally attract the attention of two kobolds a level higher than me in Elwyn Forest. And that's kind of a shame really, isn't it? Joyous reactions to that feeling on Classic. It's not a shame at all because Blizzard's their target audience. I genuinely think that a blind person could play well. Just based off of audio prompts. You know, it'd be hard for them to get from point A to point B, but combat and everything, I think they could just, they could play BFA. And there are blind people that play well. Yeah. That sounds like kind of good whenever you, but whenever you realize that if you can play it and you're blind, everybody that can see is probably going to be bored. And that's what happens. Yeah. If you want to make it inclusive to everyone, then you're going to have people it's like you cater to the lowest common denominator of whatever it is, then everybody above that's fucking bored. Prove that players enjoy it, and frankly, that they're willing to forgive a whole multitude of other sins for it too. So maybe this is a good impact that Classic could have. Probably too late for 8.2, but wouldn't it be awesome to see more of a focus on the journey in future live WoW content? Yeah, be and fucking not to make great. it the main focus of the game, because that's really impossible at this stage, but those parts of the game that are about a journey, why not make them more so? Everyone always loves that couple of weeks questing at the beginning of a new expansion. Just by giving those mobs that you tackle more yeah. chance of killing you than they do now, you could make that process last longer and feel more involved. Make the areas that those quests happen in feel more memorable, simply by making us plan our pulls smarter or team up to get through them. When we visit a whole new area in a point two patch, which is supposed to be super oh, dangerous to our max level heroes, Make it so. Make us actually That's have to think about surviving in it for longer than the 20 minute opening scenario. Make the process of gearing up. It's not about the mobs being harder. It's about people wanting to do it even though the mobs are harder because the reward is better. You can make that, yeah, you can, they can make BFA leveling as hard as classic. Yeah, of course they can. And then everybody's going to quit because nobody gives a fuck about doing it. Like, it, it, I, I just. It's not about one thing. Like Classic, the reason why it was so successful is it was a confluence of motivators that all came together to make somebody feel like they were actually spending their time and not wasting it. It wasn't just one fucking thing. Like you can make leveling take longer 
and then people will just do something else. To a point where we can smash everything, take longer simply by making it possible for those dangerous foes to kill us. And that danger is so right. important. The scaling that Blizzard introduced into WoW and Legion is great, but only really boosts enemies' health pools rather than the damage that they do. Buff that shit. Give those fish people a chance to hit us as hard as we... I'd be okay with that if if everybody like had that in the same way. The scaling shit is fucking stupid. Like, I, I don't like the idea ever of mobs and the game becoming more powerful because I become more powerful. At that point, it ceases to become a, a, an environment, a fantasy environment, and it becomes a streamlined game. Like, scaling the old world, I think, was a... It was a... a, a, a it was a bold decision. But... All things considered, it was probably a bad one. Hit them! Give us a few weeks in Najatar that really is all about the journey before those grinding systems kick in. At least the first time. Give us ways to get out through it easier, whatever. You do yeah. anyway. And if that's an impact that Classic does have on BFA, then it'll be brilliant. Except, I think we all know it never could. And this is the real problem as I see it. I Quite. don't think the community would ever let it happen. Because already, in your head, as I've been saying all of this, you know what would happen if Najatar mobs dealt comparable damage to a classic Elwyn Cobalt at level. You can imagine what certain creators would say in countless videos they make about it, that this was just another example of Blizzard artificially increasing your playtime metrics. That making these mobs harder to fight was just a cynical ploy to artificially spread their content even thinner, while at the same time correctly praising Classic for having the exact same feel. And there's the real problem. Because the end point is different. The end point in BFA is you can farm normal mode. The end point in Classic is you can clear BWL. Nobody cares about farming normal mode with slightly better gear. It, it, it doesn't matter what the... It, it's not the action, it's the goal. Classic can't be changed. That's the whole point. So we are willing to accept what we like about it while completely forgiving everything wrong with it because otherwise it wouldn't be classic. It's set in stone by definition. Because live WoW can and should be constantly improved, we are always going to focus more on those things that we don't like, those things that we want changed. If classic class balance existed in BFA, people would shit. If warlocks needed three of them to summon a demon and one of them had to die doing it, and eventually in the middle of a raid the controller of that demon would run out that and it would actually, become another hostile mob, that's that, absolutely that's a good incredibly point. cool. Yeah, this actually, I mean, that's this brilliant. Really that's awesome. That's just the kind of thing I want in the live game. If it were, though, a lot of the same people that praise it in Classic would shit. I honestly think if mobs were more dangerous and places took longer to get to, things that we all praise Classic for, the same players would not just criticize BFA for having yeah. those, but would use them as an example of scummy corporate practices. So my worry is that actually it could go the other way. That actually Live WoW will now get further removed from that kind of involved, slower, more dangerous and quirky gameplay. Because hey, if people want that, they've got classic, right? Yeah, Why this is this... all of that shit and I watched another video that said the same game? fucking that, thing. I think would be the worst impact of all. I hope it's not the case. I like to think it won't be the case, but my tiny little brain can't shake that suspicion and worry that that's how Probably it true. might turn out. I told you I was going to get a little bit philosophical on this one, and I'm sorry. And this is why I shouldn't be allowed to go more than a week without releasing an episode of this show, because it gives me too much time to think, which is clearly a terrible idea. I still believe that- I come on. I hate whenever people talk like that. It's really annoying, because obviously he thinks his thoughts are very, very, you know, like he thinks he's obviously- saying something that's unique and special that's why i made a video about it right i mean you can say that to try to counteract somebody you know criticizing you or whatever but everybody knows that obviously he thinks this is something that's uh you know introspective in a way that other people haven't been able to see things in right and, and i i don't know it's just kind of annoying we are still doing by the way we are still doing king mosh the only reason I'm playing this video is because everybody is not here, okay? And we don't have a warlock. We never have a warlock. If you want to come do King Mosh, message me on the beta, and we're trying to get everybody there. As soon as we finish this, we're going to go kill him. We might actually do it earlier.
Classic is obviously a great thing for World of Warcraft, and I'm yep. still really looking forward to Rise of Ashara. And all this is me just getting edgy, probably, because the glorious coming of my Tentacle Overlord is taking a bit longer than I'd like, and I'm sorry. Luckily, the Mythic Dungeon Invitational has been on this weekend, which was excellent, wow. because I got to watch my favourite wow. team, Abra Key Dabra. My favourite specifically because I love the mismatched bare minimum black t-shirt uniform they wear. Whenever Abra Key Dabra play, it makes me feel like I'm watching an amateur dramatic society production of the Good Woman of Setsuan or something, and that cheers me up. As Taliesin said, 8.2 is taking shape on the PTR, which is mostly okay. at the stage of numbers tuning now rather than big new things being added, okay. so it's got to be soon, right? Blizzard are even putting out blue posts telling us all about the new mounts and toys that will come with a patch and how to collect them. And they wouldn't do that if the release wasn't just around the corner, right? It would be like telling a kid that you're going to buy them a puppy in December and then not giving them a puppy until like February or something. Yes, I I'm directly comparing me not being able to play 8.2 to basically emotionally abusing a small child, but that's how it- Yeah, except for not being able to play 8.2 doesn't fucking matter. Having to play BFA is worse than emotionally abusing a child, because you're emotionally abusing millions of children all at the same time. ...feels right now, okay? It's like... Yeah, I want to start working on my stupid Skaven Doom Wheel or whatever the mount is called. Yeah, I want to quest my way to the Meccano Spider and the cool Snapdragon thing. Count me in. Yeah, I want to farm the shit out of Fabius, hoping that he will drop Fabius and we can all be Fabius together. Yeah, I want to grind prismatic mana pearls for the unshackled wave ray. How many wow. do I need for that? 250? Okay, yeah, I want to painfully grind... 250 pris- Ugh, look, maybe they'll be easier to get than I think. Yeah, I want the hyper-compressed ocean that, I don't know, I think I can fish from it, right? Like, can I actually fish from it? I don't know. But whatever, it looks good. Yeah, I'll totally have that. Okay. Yeah, I want the Alliance and Horde PvP war banners that deactivate when you enter combat because I wouldn't- I guarantee you I'm probably gonna be the only fucking person watching this video that collects all this garbage, right? It's like, I'm gonna be the one, I'm gonna have to collect this fucking stupid ass shit because I'm the one that has some sort of a compulsion to have every item in the game, right? I don't know if these guys collect all this shit or not, I have no idea, right? But I'm gonna have to collect this war standard, I'm gonna have to farm out that stupid fucking mount, I'm gonna have to figure out what the hell these things are and get it all done. Fishing's so fun, yeah, it's probably more fun than world quests, and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do every single one of them. And why am I gonna do it? Because I'm fucking addicted to the game, and I can't stop. Like, I, it's like if I see the items that are in the game, I've got to get them, right? Because I've spent 10 fucking years doing it, and there's no way I'm going to quit now. There's no fucking way. Like, it's been this long. You can't stop now. There's a new patch with new useless fucking items. Carry a horde war standard that your movement speed is slightly hindered. Oh, great. I can't wait to handicap myself with this stupid fucking item that I'm never going to use. Wow. You know, give me a fucking break, man. I want to wear a PvP banner showing my faction pride while I'm fighting an enemy on the other faction, you would I? can't do that because entering combat removes the fucking banner. Nice try, Avatel, but no. See? Class fantasy? Gone. Battle for Azeroth, by the way. What would be the point in that? Yeah, I want to drop 90k on a griffin and tarrowing reputation mount. Oh wait, what? 90k? As in 90,000 gold. Wait, what? Huh. Yeah, that's gonna add up, isn't it? I mean, you're talking just shy of a million gold for the set, but I guess they'll probably look great, right? Oh no, shit, they're not. they do. Check out that really cool spectral terror wing. That is legit. Okay, no. fine. That is totally worth no, 90k it... of anyone's money. I can't wait to see the rest. Oh. Uh-huh. It's the same one. Wow. Right. Okay. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, okay, I can see why people might not be super excited about those, but- This is like taking, like, for as a mount collector, this is literally like shitting in someone's mouth. It's like Blizzard shitting in your mouth. Because- you're so excited. Wow. I can't wait to see the new mounts and everything. And you just have to buy these mounts because you have to do it, right? Because you're collecting mounts. This is like all you do in the game. And you have to buy these mounts for no fucking reason. And like mount collecting used to mean something. Now it's just about buying different shit.
hey, there's plenty of other cool mounts to go for instead, so it's not like we need to dwell too long on the- LOL puke grade effort. They don't even pretend to care anymore, do they? 90k is stupid as hell! I love mounts! Oh, sorry, don't know how that one got in there. Sorry, one sec. Yeah. I'm not in any way going to waste time grinding gold when I could be with my kids. Have your kids grind the gold. Well, first off, let me just say, random internet man, that I'm truly sorry that you are yet to find something in a video game that you value more than spending time with your kids. Here's hoping it happens soon, and you'll never have to see them again. But yeah, these mounts aren't top of the list when it comes to effort, originality, or wish. coolness. But the good news is that's a pretty long list, and the ones at the top are really original and cool. Plus, I'm not sure 90k really counts as a gold sink. A gold sink is the rust bolt resistor, also a rep mount for the rust bolt resistance, but at 500,000 gold. Well, 524,288 gold to be precise, which is clearly a reference. Okay. There are different levels of gold sinks. So, repair bills are gold sinks. The, the size of, a, of the, the sink is not necessarily meaning that it's a gold sink it's actually there it's like a different price point for different things so not everybody buys the long boy the long boy probably removed more gold from the economy than or probably didn't remove as much gold from the economy as repairs do or as probably these other really really cheap mounts do because so many more people buy them like, something doesn't become a gold sink because it's worth a lot of money. Something becomes a gold sink if it's arbitrarily added into the game for no purpose whatsoever, for a high price, or even a modest price, whenever other times there have been things added into the game that are the exact same, that are not worth that much money. ...to the number of bytes in 512 kibibytes, which is a little ram joke right there. What, you thought I wouldn't notice that? But a small price to pay to live out all your Dr. Robotnik fantasies in WoW. We'll be doing a proper look at all the new transmog sets coming in 8.2 in a different video, but I simply would not be doing my job if I didn't point out the ray gun and the chain sword that you can get from Mechagon. That is really so cool. So now, I have Chaos pointed out the ray gun and the chain sword, Always as is badass. right and correct. We got news on the new Mythic Plus affix that will be replacing Reaping in Season 3, Beguiling. Three emissaries of Ashara can appear in random mob packs throughout the dungeon, which will empower those packs with certain abilities. So the enchanted emissary casts a damage reflect bubble around her allies, oh, meaning you'll want to knock her back out of range of I the mobs love before damage you go reflect. crazy on them. So the void fun. touched emissary has stealth and invisibility detection, meaning you won't be able to sneak past and skip whichever mobs she's looking after, and does nasty damage to anyone in her line of sight. That's Blizzard's solution to people running rogues for uh, the Shroud of Concealment. They're like, well, we'll just make it to where they can't, they can't do that anymore. Problem solved. Boom. There it is. <laughs> no way. That's the way it goes. Making trash harder. Yeah, th see, that's, that's really fun. It's like, Blizzard, here's how to make dungeons fun. Is you want to add more trash into them. You want to make the trash take longer. And add mechanics to mobs that you're just trying to kill as fast as possible. And so now you have to juggle between 18 different arbitrary mechanics all at the same time. Meanwhile, the bosses are relatively easy. Like a tr trash mechanics. Trash should have some mechanics, but PFA is just over the top. And Emissary of the Tides makes her mobs unstoppable, which means they can't be crowd controlled. So yeah, you're essentially just going to want to focus down the emissary Ooh, whenever you come anyway. across one. But they do have some interesting implications to how they'll change dungeon tactics and routes, especially since the emissaries will change position every week. And no, obviously, it's not as fun as reaping because nothing is as fun as reaping. True. But hey, it's not infested either, so it gets a thumbs up from me. Also on the PTR, currently the Azerite rewards from completing emissaries and your island expeditions weekly have increased pretty substantially, which should get everyone's Heart of Azeroth to 50 nice and quickly once 8.2 arrives. What, you haven't gotten a 50 yet? Oh, that's okay. What are you on, like 49 or something? 45. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's fine. I, I don't need to know, but it'll be much easier for you from now on, okay?
And that's because, of course, once Rise of Ashara rolls along, you're going to want to be bumping that neck up even more to, well, eventually 65 to unlock all three essence power slots. Okay, fine, sorry, 67, because you'll totally need that 3% stamina. Sorry. And it wasn't just Azerite rewards getting a hike on the PTR. Titan residuum prices have been getting the old inflation treatment too. The targeted Azerite pieces that you buy from a handy vendor, and the item level of which will go all the way up to 445 in Season 3 has increased from 7,150 to 200,000 residuum per piece for those very top items. Now the reason for this is obvious, and established, it's to stop players 200,000 I will say this, this residuum system is probably the best idea they've had in BFA, right? I'm not saying it's good, but it is the best way they can salvage the system. No, it, it is like, wait, what, what, no, you guys don't agree? Like, I mean, come on, can't believe you're not, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, let's move rocks with no purpose. Yeah, you have to move 200,000 of them next patch. No, what, why, why is it? No, it, it is, Here, here's why, right? is that everybody wanted a fucking vendor to buy Azerite gear with. Because the amount of locations you can get Azerite gear from each fucking week is limited, and then you can break down that Azerite gear and turn it into a uh, Residum, it effectively creates a weekly cap on Residum that functions as a Valor cap, which is exactly what people wanted in the first place. Anybody that criticizes this system doesn't know what the fuck they want, okay? They, they don't know what the fuck they want. Th that being said, 200,000 is fucking ridiculous. I think people just like they see this, they think it's ridiculous because they think the entire system is ridiculous, which is pretty reasonable. Stockpiling huge amounts of residuum in season two to buy all the best gear on the very first day that season three releases. Yep. I think everyone will agree that's a good thing. We don't want people doing that. One place they definitely did all agree on was on the forums, where this news was met with no surprise and even less consternation because this was completely expected. A similar price hike happened as season one transitioned to season two, and this is the system working completely as no, it was a shit show, obviously. That's disgusting. So 30 plus weeks of level 10 mythic plus runs to buy one targeted mythic. This game is a the person that wrote that should get banned from the forums because they're so fucking stupid that nobody ever needs to hear anything that they say. They're going to increase the amount of residue they give you each patch. They already said this because they did this last patch. This is not even a fucking secret at all. Like they do this. Like, uh, as I said, there are a million things to criticize BFA about, but the second that you start criticizing shit that's not even bad, that's whenever the problem happens. Like, it's it just King Mosh, by the way? Yes. Bro, Remdar. Like, do you know how long it takes from people to get to point A to point B in Classic WoW? It takes fucking forever. We have been sitting here watching this video for like a half hour, and people still aren't here. Like, we're sitting here. Like, we're still waiting for them. I'm messaging them. I'm saying, guys, head out. Head over here. We're getting close to being ready. Let's go. I'm posting constantly. I'm, I want to do this as fast as I can. Joke. Not resubbing for this crap. Oh, come on, seriously. No one is ever going to afford this unless the no life elite. What the fuck? Of course, it's not going to take you 30 plus weeks no. of level 10 keys to afford the targeted mythic piece because prices have gone up, but so will the amount of residuum yeah. you are rewarded. The length of time it takes to save up your currency will be pretty much the same as it was in season two, and all will be well. Fucking no. duh. The only sad thing about all of this is the thought that you'll often be saving up all that residuum specifically to buy the exact same piece of gear you're wearing right now, but at eye level 445. But try not to think about that too much, okay? For a more okay. specific look at all those prices, and transmogs, and mounts, and toys, and everything else, we're linking all of the relevant WoWhead articles below. Okay, so here's the thing. I've been playing lots of classic. Okay. As, as one would expect. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also been playing a lot of uh, 8.2 no. PTR, so ah. you don't have to. 
So, because, you know, no one wants to hey. play the PTR anyway. Hey. A, because classic's out. And yeah, B, like because Jesus. no one wants to ruin all of the fun times. Yeah, all the true. excitement of, of the PTR. And for the first he time, really, for your sense. pretty much everything of, of that starting experience of 8.2 is in position now. Mm. So so um, you, you go in and you do, like, the opening quest of, of uh, Najatar, and then you get sent to sort of get your essences started with all of that, and then you get sent back wow. to Najatar to do some more stuff, and then you get sent to Mechagon. And the thing is, when 8.2 does uh, open up, there is going to be a lot to do in that first week, at least. You know, there's yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff there, a lot of stuff to be getting on with, wow. and that's before like the, the proper grind even Sounds starts. Just as like well. So today, for example, mm-hmm. um, one of the things I'm really looking forward to: the battle for Najatar. Ooh. The battle for Najatar is a PVP thing. Okay, it's like world PvP. Oh, yeah. So you know when you go to yeah, this um, is actually Outland, cool. Yeah, and it's always empty because we didn't play in Burning Crusade, and oh, we've only ever known it to be like a dead leveling zone. Yes. Okay, so you know, like you've got places where you can go and just stand by the flags, right? And it makes the little thing go oh, along, yeah. and eventually it turns into like an alliance or a horde flag or whatever. Incredible. There are five of those around Najatar, uh-huh. and like wow. in various like positions. And once the battle okay. for Najatar starts, this horn goes, and then like you got half an hour to get as many points as possible, or 10,000 points which you earn by killing the other faction by killing like soldiers of the other faction okay. and by capturing these points and holding on to them All right, and there I'm are five into of them. It. yeah I'm really into it as well I'm really looking forward to how it works with like more than two people on Najatar because <laughs> yeah, yeah. when I did yeah. it earlier and I did it I sat there for the whole half an hour I did it for you for you. not for me I didn't want to do it I'd rather have been watching Same. Chernobyl or having a shower or getting seriously like any sleep, but I did it. I did it for you guys. <laughs> and I stood there and there was there, like, there was, like one of me us. and there was clearly like another alliance. There was, I was Horde and there's an alliance guy going around <laughs> changing the flag. Because obviously you get like a notification. Yeah, yeah. So like one flag yeah, went. One guy was turned into flag red and then he's turned, well he's turned into red, then another guy's turned into blue. And it's like you do one and then you go there, then he does this one, you go there, he comes back, he does that one again. Son of a fucking bitch, we gotta go up to the top again. And then you get the top one and then he gets this one here. Everybody knows what the fuck this is. Like this happens in, in BC. Like, it happens in a Rathy Basin because everybody else plays like a fucking bot. Nobody can defend the bases. ...to Alliance, and like, over the other side of the map, I got a flag for Horde. And then like, I went and captured the Alliance flag. Yeah. And, and like, my Horde one it, yeah. went blue. <laughs> and we just kind of swapped without ever meeting each other for <laughs> half an hour! Did he come back and take your flags? Uh, no, he- I, I won. Oh. I won the Battle of Najatar. Yeah, he got oh. bored. Yeah, how about that, eh? Ooh. First try, so one victory. Took me half an hour. You get um, I think I managed to get like four thousand out of ten thousand points. <laughs> just doing it completely by myself. So and it's a. I'm not sure how regular it is uh, when eight point two goes live. Um, but uh, obviously, like you're gonna get people in in war mode, sort of going around mm. and like trying to capture it. And depending on what the rewards are, Where's how they'll keep going. It's gonna be fun. It's just another thing, and it's it's cool. Like yeah. encouraging kind of open world PvP and stuff. And I was always sad when I went around um, uh, Outlands that you know. Changing those flags and stuff didn't really do anything. I was like, wow, I bet this is great fun in Burning Crusade. Where's the loot? <laughs> was it? It? Was, it wasn't even fun then. What do you mean, bro? Like, it was trash. Like, oh, wow, okay, let's go get this base in fucking Hellfire Citadel. Nobody gave a fuck about that. Nobody cared. It was a waste of time. Nobody gave a fuck. Wait, is everything good? Is everything good? Just give me a second. Is stream freezing again for no fucking reason? Everything should be fine, right? I'm looking at my drop frames. I-, I think my internet just took a shit for a second. Is everything fine? Okay, just a second. Let's make sure that I can get this to do- uh, to work. There's forgotten. To- yeah, yeah. Every- everything should be good, right? Saved? Okay, yeah. It shows it as being saved, so everything should be fine. We're going to kill King Mosh, all right? We're almost done. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. This is taking a bit of time, but we're almost ready, and it looks like we finally have a warlock heading over to summon. Okay, everything is fine. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, you can fly away. Oh. can fly away, but it was horrible. Mechagon, which is tiny, that's going to be a complete shit show when it comes to uh, yeah. PvP as well. That's going to be really yeah. good fun. And you've got all the grinding stuff in there as well. Um, and the storyline is quite fun. It yeah. just doesn't last long enough. Like, like I say in my section, like you want, I kind of just want it to be like... I don't care if it's the exact same amount of quests and stuff. 
And if they just take longer because the enemies take longer to kill or whatever, right? I just, you know, I'd like it to be a bit more involved. You never. You know? I'd be down with that, got. but people wouldn't be people wouldn't be up for it, would they? You, so never you guys have been got. absolutely amazing. We revealed to you a couple of weeks ago these pins, these Taliesin and Evertel pin badges that my own cousin is making with her Etsy store. Okay. Um, and you've been amazing. You've bought literally hundreds of these, mm -hmm. uh, which is absolutely fantastic. And as you well know, we are donating all of our half of the profits from these uh, to um, uh, Special Effects, the charity that helps uh, disabled gamers. So there'll be yeah. a good few hundred quid to give to them at the end yeah. of all of this. Um, they are still available. This is like that's that Blizzard nice. video where they were trying to sell those uh, yeah, okay. orcing human statues because uh, clearly no one's bought them. That's for you guys. Well, you need to. You can be Randy and you can say, "Oh no, I see that. I see that the T and E pin sale ends on uh, on uh, June 9th. Oh no, I can see the T and E pin sale ends on June 9th. Oh well, I've got some good news for you there, Randy uh, Evertel, because oh. I've pulled some strings and actually. Oh. There's no end date. We're just going to try and sell them all. Oh, well, so that, that go okay. for it. Okay, get cool. it. Get it done. That's and thank great. you for joining us today. If you like this video, right. don't thank us. Thank our patrons. I'll link you guys the. Uh, real life I'll link you guys the video. Okay. Uh, there you go. Spur donation charity. There's the video we watched. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a like because Taliesin, uh, just like Jesus, came down from heaven and died for our original sins. Taliesin went down from Classic WoW and had to play BFA. So uh, thank you very much for making the video. I think that the most telling thing about the battle for Nazjahar is he didn't even mention what the rewards were. So it's probably gonna be a waste of time, but uh, we'll see what's gonna happen. Yeah, the original sin. Uh, I, I don't even know what the original sin would even be, honestly, there's just so many of them at this point. Never trust to get Baldur's uh, Gate 2 trailer. No, I don't want to watch the Baldur's Gate 2 trailer. Like, we're already almost here. Let me see. Is Actually, is Eric here? Let me ask Eric if he can fly out. Um, Eric, are, are you... Shit. Uh, Eric, are you flying to Ungoro or to Tanaris? Because if he's flying to Ungoro, we can just do the Baldur's Gate video because that's going to take... Okay, he's going to fly to Ungoro. So, because he's going to summon everybody whenever he gets here. So, we're going to have to wait for him. Guys, we are almost ready. This is, listen, like, honestly, Classic WoW was made for my stream. Like, it was made for my stream. Is it, like, every single activity, there's, like, a 30-minute prep period where I can just watch videos. Like, I'm serious. Yeah, I, I like, it, it, there's a 30-minute prep period every single fucking thing that we do.